In this video, we're going to talk about fitting the Kaplan-Meier survival model in R. Previously, we've talked about the concepts of what the Kaplan-Meier model is, how it works, and we worked through an example by hand building the Kaplan-Meier survival model. Now let's look at how to implement that same stuff using R. So to do so, I'm going to read in that data set that we were working with by hand. This is the survival after diagnosis. I've just read in that data set, and if we check the names of the variables, this data set only has the survival time as well as an indicator of if the individual died or if they were censored. So it's important to note that with the death or the censoring variable, you want to make sure you know what one and what zero are coding for. Here, one indicates that the individual died. Zero indicates that they were censored. They were not, they did not die. They were just lost to follow up. In some cases, the zero and one get coded differently. So it's good to make sure you know what zero and one are coding for before you start working with the data. I'm going to work with attaching this data. And since the data set is quite short, it's only 12 observations, we can take a look at the entire data set here. So we can see that the first individual um, died at two months. The second individual was censored at three months. The third individual died at six months, and so on. So this is the data that we worked with by hand previously. Now let's take a look at getting Kaplan-Meier to fit the survival model. In order to do so, we're going to need to load the survival library in R. Now, the survival package is already built into base R, so you don't need to install this package, but you will need to load the library in order to use these survival commands. So I've done that here. Now, in order to fit the Kaplan-Meier model, we're going to use this serve fit command. And so I'm going to fit the model, I'm going to store it in an object called km.model, and to do so, I'm going to use this serve fit command to fit a survival analysis. I'm going to let R know the type is Kaplan-Meier. We'll note that Kaplan-Meier is the default, so if you don't specify the type, it will fit the Kaplan-Meier by default. Then, the way we specify the survival time, or our Y variable, is using a capital S. It's S-U-R-V, so the survival, and then in parentheses, we need to give it both the time that the individual was followed for, as well as the indicator of whether the event occurred, they died, or if they were censored. So this here, the serve time comma death, is all of our y or outcome variable. And then tilde one. And the reason we have a one there is that for this data set, we don't actually have any x variables. So this is the way we let r know that we're just estimating survival without using any particular x variables. So we can submit that command here. And also just a reminder, as I mentioned earlier, the Kaplan-Meier is the default type so if we don't specify that, if we just enter it as this command is showing here, we'll get the exact same model fit. So now that the model's been fit, we can ask for a few summaries. If we just ask R to return the KM model itself, we'll see the output that we get tells us the total number of individuals, which was 12, the number of events, 10, right? There were 10 deaths and two censored observations. It also gives us the median survival time. So half the people survived beyond 15 months, half did not. And this is what we saw previously when we looked at drawing the Kaplan-Meier survival curve by hand. We also returned a 95% confidence interval for the median. So we can see we're 95% confident that median survival is somewhere between 7 and infinity. And we don't get an upper bound, and we'll see why this is um, in a moment when we start to look at some of the plots. The main reason is that this data set is so small that we actually aren't able to get an upper limit for the confidence interval around the median survival. Now, we can also ask for a summary of the model. Let's take a look at that here. If we ask for a summary of the KM model, we can see that we're given the set of steps that would define the Kaplan-Meier survival function. So again, this is previously what we had calculated by hand. We see at time two, there were 12 individuals at risk going into time two. One death occurred. The probability of surviving beyond two months is 91.7%. And we're also given a standard error associated with that survival, as well as a 95% confidence interval. So in other words, we're 95% confident that there's somewhere between a 77.3% up to 100% chance of surviving beyond two months. We can see at time six, there were 10 individuals at risk going into time six. Two of them died. The probability of surviving beyond six months is 73.3%. 
Again, we can see the standard error for that estimate of 0.1324 and the 95% confidence interval. So we're 95% confident that there's somewhere between a 51.5 up to 100% chance of surviving beyond six months. Now these are extremely wide confidence intervals and that's because um, the sample size is so small, right? It's only 12. This data set is really useful for introducing the idea of the Kaplan-Meier survival model, but for kind of a real study or, or data we'd like to work with, we'd like a sample size larger than just 12. But so we can see here, this table is the table that we were producing by hand. Now, if we want to, we can ask R to make a plot of this model. In order to do that, we can ask R to plot the KM model. So this is going to plot the Kaplan-Meier model that was fit. Telling it conf.int equals F, capital F or false, tells R to not put a confidence interval around the survival function. Then the X lab and Y lab are giving the uh, plot an X axis and Y axis labels, and the main is the title. So let's look when we submit this command. We can see there we're given the Kaplan Meyer um, survival model. Now, if we wanted to, we can ask R to put confidence interval or confidence bands around this survival function. To do so, we would just set the conf.int argument equal to capital T or capital true. And I'll also mention in this uh, plot command here, I've set LAS equals to one. What this is gonna do is rotate the values on the Y axis. You can take a look at the way they look right now. And now let's enter this plotting command and see how things change. We can see now these dashed lines give us confidence interval around the survival function. And we can also see that LAS equal one's argument, how it's rotated the values on the Y axis. Now, taking a look at this here, let's just remind ourselves when we asked R to give us the median survival, we can see that the median survival was estimated to be 15 months with a 95% confidence interval between seven months and infinity or no upper bound. I'm just going to add a, a red horizontal line at 50% into this plot so we can see what's going on there. We can see, so that red line is at 50% or 50% surviving, 50% not. So it's looking at the median survival. We can see that red line crosses the survival function right at the 15 months, right? That's our median. We can see where it hits the lower limit, right? It crosses that dashed line of the lower limit at seven months. And we can see it never hits the dashed line for the upper limit, right? And again, this is because our sample size is so small, this confidence interval is so wide that we never actually get to hitting an upper limit for the survival. Now, one more thing we can note, I'm gonna produce the same plot again, but um, you can see I can set this mark.time equal to true. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna add in little tick marks everywhere there was a censored observation. So if you remember, there was observations censored at three months and at 10 months. So let's submit this command here. And we can see now we have little ticks drawn in on that plot at the three month and 10 month mark. So again, this just helps us visualize where and uh, when observations were censored. Now let's continue on talking about the Kaplan-Meier model, but let's include an X variable into fitting this model now. So now what we're gonna do is continue on with that same data yeah, those individuals were all under 40 years old. We're gonna add in more data points, and this is gonna be a group of individuals who are over 40 years old. Okay, so in other words, we're adding an X variable over 40, yes or no. In order to do that, first I'm gonna detach the set of data that we were working with, and I'm gonna remove it. Now, just a quick note on attaching data. We've noted throughout our course that attaching data is not really the best way to work. It's better to work with um, either using the dollar sign or specifying the data set that you're working with in the R commands. But we've noted that the reason we're working with attaching data is while R is still relatively new to most of you, it's easier if we can remove some of the syntax or some of the extra coding. But if you're comfortable at this point, you can stop working with attaching the data and work in ways that are a bit better practice in terms of coding. So now I'm gonna read in the second data set here. So this is the AIDS survival groups data set. And if we ask for the names of this data, we can see it has the time that they were followed for, an indicator of if they died or if they were censored, as well as 
the variable indicating if they're over 40, yes or no. Let's attach this data. And I'm also going to actually ask R to let us view this data in the data view here. So let's just take a look at that quickly. We can see now we've got this X variable over 40. Zero for no. So these are all the original 12 data points that we were working with so far. And now we have this over 40, yes. Okay, this second group of individuals who are over 40. So now we've added an, an X variable into this data set. So what we're going to do here is fit a Kaplan-Meier model where we try and estimate survival as a function of over 40, yes or no. In order to do so, it's pretty much the same syntax as we saw before. I'm going to call this km.model2. We're going to use the serve fit command to tell R we want to fit a survival function. The type is Kaplan-Meier. Again, this is the default, so it's not necessary to enter that. And we're going to tell it the survival, which consists of time and death. We want to estimate that as a function of the over 40 variable. So let's submit that command into R here. We've now fit the model. The first thing we can do is take a look at a plot of this model that we fit. So I'm going to ask R to plot the km.model2. I'm going to tell it conf int equals false. We're asking it to not put the confidence bands on there, at least for now. I'm going to give it an X label and a Y label, as well as a title. So we can see here, these are now the two survival functions that we fit. One for the over 40 group and one for the under 40 group. We can also see similar summaries to what we saw before. If we ask R to give us a summary of the km.model2, so we can see we're given the set of steps that define the over 40 equals no group here, right? It's specified by over 40 equals zero. This is the function we saw earlier. And now here's the set of steps that define the over 40 equals one, right? Or the um, yes, they're over 40 group. We can also ask R just to give us the km.model2 information. And through this, we can see we're given the number of individuals who were over 40 and under 40. We can see the number of events that have occurred. We can also see the median survival times. So we can see those who are under 40 have an estimated median survival of 15 months. Those who are over 40 have an estimated median survival of three months. Now, we can take a look at making that same plot again, but let's add in some colors and a legend, as well as ticks for the sensor, censored observations. So to do so, we're going to ask R to plot the km.model2. I'm going to tell it conf.int equals false, right? I don't want the confidence bands drawn in. I'm going to give it an X label, a Y label, and main being the title. I'm going to tell R the colors to be used are red and then blue. Red for the first group, blue for the second group. Here, this is going to be red for the under 40, blue for the over 40. The LAS equals one argument is going to rotate the values on the y-axis. The LWD equals two is the line width. One is the default value. So LWD of two is going to make the lines twice as wide as they'd normally be. And the mark.time equals true is asking R to put a little tick um, in there anytime there was a censored observation. So if we make that plot, we can see now we've added colors, it makes it a bit easier to different differentiate the two. We can also see the tick marks where there were censored observations. Um, and we can add a legend to this plot as well. Now, a reminder, we have a whole separate video on adding legends to plots. So if you really want to get into the details of adding legends, you can view that video separately. To do so, we're going to use the legend command. First, we must specify the x and y coordinate where the box, where the upper left corner of the legend box is going to start. So here I'm asking R to place the legend at x equals 18, y equals 0.95. Again, that's going to be where the upper left corner of the box starts. Then the legend equals argument specifies the names or what would go in the legend. So we're going to have a row for under 40 and a row for over 40. LTY is the line type. I'm telling it to use line type 1. Okay, that's just a solid line like we see there. LWD equals 2. It's telling it to use a line width of 2. Then the COL argument is telling it which colors to put. So it's going to put the first one is red, the second one is blue. The BTY is the box type. Leaving the BTY like this is going to produce a box. Putting BTY box type equals N is going to put no box around the legend. And the CEX argument is the kind of size of the writing or the font. One is the default value. So using 0.6, it's going to make the font 60% of the default size. So we can see that there. Now. One final thing before we 
finish this video and move on to other things. An important question we might want to try and answer is, do we think the two survival functions are statistically significantly different? Or in other words, do we think that the survival differs depending on if someone is over or under 40? Okay, so just taking a look at it here visually, you know, we can pretty confidently say that it looks like the survival, right, the probability of surviving beyond a certain time, changes depending on if someone's over or under 40. But let's get to talking about the formal test for doing that. Now, in this video, we won't talk about the mathematical details of the log rank test, but the log rank test is a way of testing is there a, a significant difference between the two survival curves. It also gets known as the mantle hansel test. So for those of you who have learned about the mantle hansel method, or sometimes called the cochrane mantle hansel method, for those of you who have learned about it or explored it a bit, you can hook onto that knowledge there. It's essentially based on the same concept. Um, it's also similar to there's another option for testing if, if survival curves are significantly different, and that's the Wilcoxon test. Again, it's testing the same thing in a slightly different way. If you want more details, you can go online and, and do a web search or read in a textbook about the exact details of the log rank test. For this video, we're going to stay just on the level of what is it and what's it for. This has a null hypothesis that the survival in the two groups is the same. Here, the survival functions for the two groups is the same. The alternative, the survival functions of the two groups is not the same. Okay, and we should mention it can be done for more than two groups. So if we had four different age categories, we could do the log rank test to test if there's a difference in the survival function for those four age categories. In order to do this test, the command in R is serve diff, okay, testing survival difference. So that's the command for the test. And in parentheses, we must specify the model that was fit. So here it was the survival, which consists of time and death, estimated as a function of the over 40 variable. Now, it would be nice if we could just specify we want to do the survival difference and in parentheses, just give it the model name that was fit. I imagine that at some point in the future, R may allow for this, uh, allow for just entering the model name rather than having to re-specify the model there. But this is how it works. So if we submit that command, we can see here in the end, the test statistic is 4.8, the p-value is 0.03. Based on that small p-value, we can reject our null hypothesis. We have evidence to believe the, that survival is not the same, depending on if you're over or under 40. Or we have evidence to believe that survival depends on whether one is over or under 40. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.